Morning, everyone. Once again, we're here on We're Burning Daylight, looking forward to gather again, reading God's Word. What truth, and the truth according to the Word, will set man free. Uh, I pray that you've had opportunity today to uh, rise and shine with God and give it Him praise, but let us, if we can, continue in that and reading His Word together. Go to Revelation chapter 18 and read that on your own. For today, I want to dive, first of all, into John chapter 10 and looking at Jesus, the true, true shepherd of our lives. And uh, as together we read, we start with, most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. The sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. Hear this, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. I'm going to jump over to verse 22. Now it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter, and Jesus walked into the temple in Solomon's porch. And the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, then they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. Hallelujah. Let's move over into the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, what an incredible book to read. But we're going to just take a small portion out of a chapter in uh, Isaiah chapter 10, beginning in verse 20. Uh, we're going to be talking about the returning remnant of Israel for a moment. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as have escaped of the house of Jacob will never again depend on him uh, who defeated them, but will depend on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant will return in the remnant of Jacob to the mighty God. For though your people, O Israel, be as sand of the sea, a remnant of them will return. The destruction decreed shall overflow with righteousness, for the Lord of hosts will make a determined end in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrian. He shall strike you with a rod and lift up his staff against you in manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while, and the indignation will cease, as will my anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts will stir up a scourge for him like the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Horeb. As his rod was on the sea, so will he lift it up in the manner of Egypt. One more verse in this chapter. Stay with me as we hear this one. This is an underlined worthy verse for you and I today. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the oil of anointing. Oh, hallelujah, that oil of anointing. I pray that today that that oil of anointing is flowing richly upon each and every one of us. I want to take us, uh, if we could, together to Psalm chapter 17. Let us read this praise, this Psalm of David. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry, give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence, and let your eyes look upon things that are upright. You have tested my heart, you have visited me in the night, you have tried me and have found nothing. I have purpose that my mouth shall not transgress. transgress. Concerning the works of man, by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. 
I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand, O you who save those who trust in you from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. For the wicked who oppress me from the deadly enemies who surround me, they have closed up their fat hearts. With their mouths they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes crouching down to the earth as lions as eager to tear his prey and like young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront him, cast him down. Deliver my life from the wicked with your sword, with your hand from man, O Lord. From men of the world who have their portion in this life and whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure, they are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possessions for their babes. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Praise be to the Lord Jesus and thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. I want us to go together and reading our devotion for the day. It is called Vindication and Satisfaction. In the 18th and 19th centuries, personal insults required satisfaction. Satisfaction was linked to vindication. When a person felt that someone had assaulted his personal honor, a friend would arrange a duel and those involved would settle the matter by violence. In our day, we are just as concerned with vindication and will violently protest our innocence when we believe we have been wronged. Very little energizes us like the desire to clear our names and to prove that we are right. We will not rest or be satisfied until we have proved ourselves to be true. Leaving aside the fact that we are deeply flawed and are never completely without fault, vindication does not come from our activity. The psalmist wrote, let my vindication come from your presence. Chapter 17, verse 2. That was our latter portion of reading this morning. It is inevitable that we will be misunderstood. It is inevitable that we will offend or disappoint others. Invariably, when we try to clear our names, we only muddy the water. God invites us to let him defend us. We are not even supposed to attend our own court case. Jesus invites us to rest in his presence while he rises to our defense. We find a similar promise in Isaiah 10, 27. The yoke will be destroyed because of the oil, anointing oil. The yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. It is not my effort that vindicates or breaks through oppression and confusion. It is the active work of God to clarify and free. Jesus did not open his mouth when he was on trial. He could have vindicated himself before Herod and Pilate, but he chose not to. Jesus invites us into his own character, into the satisfaction of being like him. Hear the word again. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Psalm 17, verse 15. When we are insulted or maligned, vindication and satisfaction come from sheltering in the presence of Jesus and being conformed to his image. Oh, sheltering in his presence, abiding in Christ. How critical it is for you and I to get under the wings of the Almighty. The time we most want to defend ourselves is a time we should intentionally retreat to the presence of Jesus, shut our mouths, and let him use the uncomfortable and embarrassing circumstances to stamp his image deeply upon us. Oh, Lord, I pray that this morning that we quit trying to uh, do things on our own and trying to make things right on our own, but that we would put all our trust in you, that we would come up under underneath the shelter of your wings and we would allow you in the midst of being in your presence to take care of all the busy the activity that which is against us that which we feel has attacked us that we would just give it over to you i pray today for each and every one that is hearing and listening that we have a complete sense of surrender 
to you. I thank you for your word today. And I thank you for ears that have heard that we may be different than what we were before we awoke this morning. In your precious name we pray today. I want everyone to have a glorious day in Jesus. And I pray that we see you tomorrow. If the Lord tarries, we will be here. We're burning daylight.